This is Biel, a 14-year-old student with asthma, going into the outpatient clinic to get a flu shot. From the time he was born, he has received vaccines for at least 12 different diseases. In the first two years of life, babies get most of the routinely recommended vaccines to make sure they are protected as early as possible from illnesses that can affect infants and sometimes lead to serious complications. Such is the case with polio, a highly infectious viral disease that mainly affects children under five years of age, causing irreversible paralysis in one out of 200 cases. Nuria was born in Barcelona in 1961 when there was no polio vaccine available and got infected as a baby. She had to undergo surgery twice in her life, but managed to walk and have two children. But as she neared 50, she broke her thigh bone and ever since she has been confined to a wheelchair. Her friend Zule is from Colombia and was infected by polio in 1969 when she was three months old just a few days before she was scheduled to be vaccinated. She had to undergo surgery and painful rehab in order to walk with crutches and cope with low back, knee and hip pain for the rest of her life. Since the 1998 World Health Organization WHO campaign to eradicate polio, cases around the world have decreased by over 99% from an estimated 350,000 to just 37 reported in 2016. Thanks to biomedical research and many other actors, vaccines against a litany of diseases like polio have allowed many other illnesses to be controlled and even eradicated. And today, scientists keep working hard to make vaccines even safer and more effective even as they develop new ones against diseases like HIV and malaria. But how do vaccines work? To understand this, let's have a look at how our immune system works. Viruses and bacteria use our cells to reproduce. While they do so, our immune cells try to respond and our future health relies on their ability to detect and control these bugs. If they succeed, we recover from the infection and our body is ready to respond quickly to future infections caused by the same bugs. Vaccines act in a similar way. They teach our immune system to recognize the bugs that cause an illness and to defend us from them if we're infected in the future. Vaccines are made using proteins. Attenuated or inactivated pathogens or parts of the virus and bacteria that cause the disease. In some instances, they also contain adjuvants, such as aluminium or oil, that enhance the immune response. In some rare cases, in order to protect the vaccine against contamination, thimerosal, a mercury-based product, is used. Although these substances may be perceived as unnatural or potentially harmful, their quantities and safety profiles have been clearly determined, they are safe and their benefit outweighs the risk. Although the implementation of some vaccines has occasionally spurred controversy about their safety, efficacy and benefits, healthcare professionals, scientists and the WHO, UNICEF and most of the population are convinced that the benefits of today's vaccines clearly outweigh their risks. These risks are far lower than taking a plane, which is a risk that most of the population accepts. But vaccinations not only benefit you. When you get a vax, you are protected against a certain disease, and by getting that vax, you also help keep the disease from spreading through your community, creating a sheltering effect. Therefore, vaccines also contribute to the so-called herd immunity, by providing protection to those who cannot benefit from vaccination. Such is the case, for example, with newborns and also with children with cancer or people with chronic illnesses 
who cannot be vaccinated and are more likely to be infected and would require hospitalization. And what happens when a community faces an outbreak within a population with a low percentage of vaccinated people? In recent years, pockets of under-immunized people have resulted in outbreaks of infections such as measles in many countries. Measles is a highly contagious disease that usually causes high fever, cough and a rash and remains one of the leading causes of death among infants. This is only one example of why the mission of the WHO and every country is to extend vaccinations around the globe in order to successfully eliminate more diseases, as has happened with polio, or even eradicate them, as has happened with smallpox.